What's up, y'all? This is your boy Stubborn Sal, and you're watching the Do Over Don't podcast, and we're gonna teach you how to be stubborn with Stubborn Sal. Built a bunker in the booth. I got some gold on my tooth. Can't miss any shot that I shoot. Couple of bins on my shoes. It's us, yeah, we on the news. You was down, yeah, we had the blues. Had to pick it up, new life that I choose. So ask me what I'm gonna do. What's good, Do Over Don't Purple World episode 103? Today we got a day motherfucking one homie. One of the most talented people, I've been telling you this for years, one of the most talented people I've ever met. This motherfucker be the Baba Builder of music, <laughs> bro. Like, dead ass. If you guys, if this is your first time ever seeing this dude, which if you're a fan of DOD, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you because he's like one of the main artists that is, one of the only people that has stayed consistent and still here after four years. Mm. But... I can't give you the legend status yet because you got a lot more to do. But this dude, I'm glad you didn't watch. I'm not there yet. But anybody watching this, pay attention to all these episodes and stuff. I'm telling you right now, out of all the episodes I've done, if we watch this in ten years, this motherfucker is gonna be like on like some Kanye shit. But enough of me gassing you up for the intro, Mister Mister Stubborn Sal, Bourbon Bell, the Handy Mandy of the music industry. No, Bob the Builder is better. Handy Mandy always gave me crazy. Isn't he vibes. bald? Okay, I mean I'm kind of bald, bald too, but. You got a good point with that. You I do. Know. I do appreciate the. Intro, oh, I forgot bro. you chopped the hair, yo. Yeah. I forgot. I don't you even see me seen... three times with no hair on my head, and every time is like new to you, bro. Because I'm just so used to long hair, Sal. I've known long hair, Sal, for years, bro. I killed him. He's dead. Yo, cool, it, bro. <laughs> what's What's good with you, bro? It's been three and a half years, possibly, since you've been on the channel. A long time. Yeah. But You've been, you've been making a lot of noise. Just anybody watching this, just giving them some insights on your recent whereabouts. What's been going on? Yeah, so, you know, Stubborn Sal is the name, and i just been really figuring out how to go about this music thing, bro. I'm going to keep it a buck, but I'm having a great time along the way. Like, I've met a lot of people, learned a lot of things, so, yeah, just really focusing on music and music videos. That's it. I think one of the dopest parts about your content that you've been putting out is it doesn't even seem like content. It literally just seems like you having fun and just doing stubborn shit. Like literally, that's the whole point. That's, that's the whole point. It, it's like effortless, bro. Like I love it. I always try. And any artist watching this, stop doing that extra hyper formulated shit. The hardest thing for artists is to be themselves on shit. And I feel like during it, I know you personally, so it's like I'm able to tell. But it's literally mm -hmm. just you being shown throughout it. It's not mm -hmm. like the artist layer. Of you. It's Solomon. It's you. Yeah. Because like, bro, I can't. I tried to overthink this music thing, and it didn't work. Like I had aneurysms, and just right. like my brain melted. So I was like, the easiest thing to do, like, literally the easiest thing, it might be difficult, but the easiest thing to do as a creative is to just be yourself. Like, it's only hard when you don't know who you are. Uh, so. And you definitely know who you are, my friend. For a minute. You definitely know. For Talking about the brain <coughs> aneurysm, bro. We got to talk about all these projects that these motherfuckers <laughs> don't know about. This dude, I'm going to just say this, and if he wants to touch more on it, he could. I will. Anybody I know, this dude got, like, the craziest strategized fucking vault, bro. In the like, oh, I'm talking about the vault, bro. The vault. Oh snap! This, this you bringing up the bro, vault. This motherfucker's vault. That's a dangerous topic. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't even know if anyone if nah, he wants speak to speak on the vault. What do you know about the vault, bro? This dude has how many albums? <laughs> Five, including Bad Luck Casper's album. I'm working on. I'm co-producing his. Bro, Casper. Casper, you need to come on the show after you drop the project. Shout out Casper King. Shout out Casper, bro. Shout out Casper. Casper from the mud. Bro, Casper is that motherfucker, bro. I'm hit, but the vault go crazy. Yeah, yeah, you definitely know about the vault. Dude, I've been waiting. You know how many songs that I've been waiting to come out for for like three years at this I'm point? I'm honestly, I'd be like thinking to myself, like, bro, I should just stop showing people. Because I know it's not coming out anytime Yo, soon, bro. low-key, you should. Because the thing about your music, bro, like, me and Sully, I think I think it was Sully I was having a conversation with. We were just talking about how there's certain music that's ahead of time. Like, all of the shit that you've played me is some shit that literally is timeless in the sense it could come out in 10 years. That shit will mm. probably still sound futuristic. That's the thing with this motherfucker. This dude has, like, industry-changing music that is just sitting in your fucking iCloud. On the iCloud, it's crazy. Bro, like... On the hard drives, on a Google Drive, yo, on the desktop. Bro, knowing people behind the scenes got to be, like, the most bittersweet thing because it's just, like, I know all the shit that you be up to, and the people watching this don't know, like, 98% of it. Honestly, you probably just waiting for me to drop the music you've already heard to really, like, go crazy. Saying. And, the, you know, the fucked up part, the projects I've been hearing... 
it's all new shit I haven't heard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like, all right. So a lot of like 2023, I was experimenting because I was like, I know I have a lot of songs that I haven't dropped, yeah. but where I'm at right now, and like I need to just create. So I'm like, instead of adding to the vault all the new music I'm gonna make this year, I'm gonna just drop it. So that's why you got like songs like right. um Chrome seventy two. Chrome seventy two. I don't even know what else I dropped this year. Bro, you could drop I me mean, like, last year. You went crazy the past I kinda two have years. To check. Hold up. I was gonna say, cause I can't even keep track of all the releases, bro. Like this past I'm year. I forgot. It, I swear you like woke up one day and you were just like, all right, I'm gonna start flooding. I'm and then gonna I dropped just... Neutron too. Yeah, I forgot, bro. I forgot that you even dropped Yeah, this. all right. So we're gonna go through the, the releases this year. 2023, The Red Fantasies. Started off crazy with that I one. just completely forgot that you even did that project until you just said that. Yep. I accidentally dropped my own, like, I leaked my own music called Let's Go to Montreal. Yeah. We're gonna skip over that. Tatiana with Simeon and my boy TVO. That was a collab. Pad Thai. I'm glad that one came out. Neutron. That's when I was like, I was lit. I was like, that cover art, I'm like outside walking. I just finished a show. Safe Haven is dope. I got that beat from my boy K2 in Florida. And then I rolled out the um, I rolled out the EP with um, Chrome 72. My time travel. That's yeah. good word, dude. Music video coming soon for that. So look out for that music video. Directed by Nicole. I already know. Oh, your sister, Nicole? Yeah. Bro, that, I was saying it right before the camera started. This motherfucker got, like, the dopest family of fucking creators, bro. <laughs> Let's talk like, about it. Like, yeah, honestly, like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm glad I was born because <laughs> it could be a lot rougher, but it's not that rough. Literally, my sister is a videographer, right? My little sister, she's, she's, like, she's like 14. If I'm wrong, forgive me. She's like 14. She just started tapping into like the creative space. She's trying to do yeah. a bunch of stuff, own businesses and this and that. She's good at painting too and drawing. Yeah. My other sister, she's a really good people person. Like she can communicate. Like she's getting paid millions of dollars for it. So literally talking to her every every time I talk to her about something like creative or like artistic wise, I feel like I'm talking to Rick Rubin as a black woman. God, damn. And it's dope. And then my other sister, like all my sisters really are like, they're like, they do a lot. My dad was in a choir. He don't tell me nothing about that, but I found out. My mom was also singing in the church. Wow. So, and my, my grandpa was like a craftsman. So, yeah. like, it's really in the blood, but I don't know how, like, I got a big percentage of that, though. I was going to say, so, because everyone just seems, you guys just seem like a creative smoothie, bro. Like, Yeah, it's like, a lot of my family, we all, like, we all have a lane. Like, my sister's in the visual. I'm in the music. And then you got um, communications. Media, all that, that stuff. Fire, bro. It's dope. We're trying to build a company like a media production company, low key. That shit will be fire as fuck, bro. Because I know every the fucked up part is, like, none of it's bad. <laughs> like it's all fire as fuck. Like it don't get bad, bro. The I only know like I've only had a handful of ass beats, and that's when I was starting off in like twenty twenty fifteen. God damn! Isn't it crazy to think that's nine years ago? Saying that I'm is bad? it nine years ago? It was twenty fifteen. Dang. That should make me feel old, bro. That is crazy, <laughs> bro. So how'd the music, what made you, if you got all these different assets of creativity, what made you choose music? Like, what was your calling if you could remember mm. the first time that you were like, all right, I want to make this shit? Honestly, I feel like music spoke, to, this is, it is what it is, but I feel like music just spoke to me in a different way. Like, I can look at a, a painting or a picture or a visual art and I feel like I'm doing most of the work as a consumer and as a creator. With music, I feel like music is doing most of the work, which is beyond me. And anything that's beyond me, I'm I gravitate towards it. So I'm like I can literally play three chords and my mood will change. And I can change those three chords and move my finger placement and then my mood will change. Or like an instrumental with no lyrics, no words can still make me feel something. So the fact that music kind of like is a language and, you know, the more bilingual and trilingual you are, the more like, you know, you got that. You feel me? So adding that to my, my languages I speak was kind of necessary. Bro. And you're talking about the feeling shit. Like you get that shit across through mm -hmm. your music. Like the amount of people I know, bro, that literally just like stubborn sound music is like their peace place. I'm not going <laughs> to mention Shorty's name, but you know who my ex is. She literally, one of your songs 
was literally a song. If she ever had a panic attack, she would literally play really? that shit to calm down. I swear to God. Dang, bro. I swear to God, bro. That's why I chose music, bro. Because, I mean, I could literally, like, you can come to me with a problem and, like, vent to me and rant to me. I could talk with you and, like, help you out. But nine times out of ten, I'm not going to say nothing verbally that's really going to impact you. You play my song, it probably will. Even talking about my expressing myself with words, I can do it, but like I just I get it mixed up too much. But with music, it's so like seamless. Bro, that's crazy to hear though. Like, I like I like hearing that. Yo, like mad people though. Like, that's not even the only one. Like fucking, I know, when I tell you like everyone that listens to your shit that is literally just like their peacefulness, bro. Like people, I know, the amount of people I've heard that are like, yo, Sal, I only listen to Sal when I'm editing. I only listen to Sal when really? I'm doing this. I, I bet I bet people say that shit. Aaron probably said that at one point in was time. It Aaron? I forget. It, I forget if it was Aaron. He's definitely. Or Ryan. It was he's definitely a diehard. Yeah, I know, bro. Like everybody, and we gotta get into it too. He ain't just a fucking artist in the sense of just vocals on it. Honestly, bro, you gotta give everyone on this a rundown of all the different uh, shit you do because I can't even keep track. <clears throat> get some like, water for yeah, because you be motherfucker be holding a camera one day, shooting a music video for people, fucking making all beats. Right. <laughs> the best way I could describe myself. Currently, right now, is a creative crusader. Any type of lane that has to do with creating something, I am capable of doing it. Currently, my my um, inventory, my set of skills right now, I'm a videographer, I'm an editor, I'm a producer, an engineer, a singer, songwriter, rapper. I wouldn't really call myself a fashion designer, but I do design my own merch. Like all the all the designs from merch, I I design that, and so graphic design too. Yeah, graphic design, <laughs> like poetry, obviously. Bro. Um, I'm gonna get into architecture. The most I've done is like Jenga blocks and Legos, but when I get to like the real stuff, I'm gonna get to that. You feel me? Bro. And you be acting too, didn't you act in like a couple of your sister's film? Yeah. yeah. I had some sh- I had some short roles. Uh, I applied. I'm gonna say this now because the time has passed. But back in the day, I was not letting no one know. I applied. Not applied. I auditioned for um, Euphoria. Yo, it's funny when you were saying auditioning. <laughs> I was like, why do I have a feeling he's gonna say Euphoria? Really? I I, went, I don't know what the fuck when you were just saying that. I literally Man, had that in my head, bro. I was this close, bro. Literally, Here, I just yeah. had weak confidence, bro. They told me that. They was like, we we like what you did. But you just this is it's clearly new to you, so we ain't trying to do all that. Bro. I was like, you know what? That's all right. Didn't even take my music either, but that's all right. So I I was into acting for a little bit. Yeah. Bro, that shit is crazy. It's like how the fuck do you do I do a bunch of different shit too, but how are you like able to do so much different shit and be good at all of it? <laughs> that's like, a good question. I mean Like how do you focus <coughs> where to put your time, basically? Hmm. I know music is where a majority of my creative effort goes, but how I had to start looking at it was like art in general is just one lane in and of itself. So whether that's music, dancing, photography, videography, it's all the sense of communication. So when I look at it like that, I'm like, okay, what do I want to communicate? If I have an idea, can a song do it? If not, can a video do it? If not, can a picture do it? If not, can... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I kind of just, I went down the rabbit hole, bro. I went down the rabbit hole and I, I couldn't look back ever since. You feel me? Because different aesthetics that I have is like, like if you see me, you wouldn't really know what kind of music. You can assume, but like you wouldn't really know. I have no idea. And I like that because I make a bunch of different music. And at the same time, I wear a bunch of different type of styles. So it's like, I just like being that, um, you just roll the dice. You don't know what you get. I was going to say, because that's the thing about your music is like, you have everything cohesive and you have a sound down. You have the sound image, everything down. And it's like every time you think you know what you're going to expect and then you just do the polar fucking opposite. Mm-hmm. Like it's literally like, okay, you think it's going to be, you drop fucking um, in the ivory. And then that obviously a lot of Afro beats. It's just like a lot of calm music. Yeah. And then you drop the fucking how to be stubborn shit yeah. and red fantasies. And yeah. then it's like, <laughs> like what the fuck? It's like three night and day, like completely yeah. different sounds. And also too, even some of the other shit. Like I've heard 
the rap rap shit. I be hearing oh. the baby angel singing shit. Yeah. Like I hear like all of it, yeah. Like no, nah, that's what got it. you. It, that's what got you. You used to tell me shit. like, yo, Bro. your voice is crazy, yo. Because I remember everyone, yo. I remember like fucking when we dropped the OG Dod album. My dad calling yeah. me and my dad being like, yo, who's this stubborn Sal dude? Shout Bro, out Cox, like, man. Yo, he fucking like everybody, bro. The first time they hear your voice, like I don't think I've ever heard one person that has heard your voice for the first time been like that shit's ass, like. Everybody has the same reaction. It's like you and Tempo are like the two people. It's like you could definitely show. Tempo too. Like both of you though, bro. Like you just yeah. you got that like angelic shit down, bro. Talking it's about that. euphoria, like your music feels fucking euphoric. It's that <laughs> gift, boy. Bro. That's that gift. God took I his time crafting actual. your brain. You <laughs> like, put bro. the cheat codes in my brain, bro. I'm gonna fuck it down, right, up, left, X, no Y, cap, all of them <laughs> lay it out. Um, Quick side note, you know the game um GTA San Andreas? Yeah. Bro, I had a I used to write down the cheat codes on a piece of paper. Yeah. Staple them together and fold it up, put in the bro. game. <laughs> Yo, bro. Every time I play, I'll be like, Yo. Nobody like uh, kids yeah, nowadays crazy. have it mad easy. Cause back then they get like cheat codes and shit. It was like, okay, you had to go on a desktop or some shit, because we didn't have phones. Okay. And then if you didn't have a fucking laptop, you had to go buy the fucking magazines from the fucking game yeah, store and then look through or that Or hope shit, one of your bro. friends got them. Yeah, bro, literally. Like, people, it's like the same shit with Mortal Kombat fatalities, bro. I have no idea how the fuck people used to figure them shits out in, like, the 70s, bro. <laughs> Honestly, bro. Like, dead ass. Once I realized, like, oh, there's no, like, actual thing for these, <laughs> like, you have to just do it. Bro. I used to get whooped. Yeah, bro. Like, that shit, crazy bro we're in a fucking the generation change is like insane because we just watched all this technology shit like completely change we didn't have any mm-hmm. of this shit when we were fucking that's why it's crazy you said like 2015 was nine years ago bro that shit's like you know how crazy. how much things have changed in nine years i know bro i know and especially with the covid shit like because the world bro Man. everybody tries to act like shit back to normal I'm gonna fuck nah. with anybody says. this shit has been weird as shit since covid happened bro. honestly i think the paradigm shifted in like like i don't know i think chromosomes kind of lack now yeah bro i think like they're not like when that happened like maybe towards the beginning of 21 like when people started thinking things were back to normal nah our chromosomes is still in 2020, yeah, bro. Yeah, straight up. Bro. A lot of things are still in 2020, bro. bro. Straight up, bro. Just good and bad. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, God, bro. I look back at that year, and I'm like, I'm glad I was inside, bro. Yeah. I, I, actually, I got to actually lock in with the music. No bullshit, bro. I be thinking about that all the time. Like, I feel like if COVID didn't happen, mad of us wouldn't have met each other. Obviously, nah. you and Sully knew each other, but like... That dead ass might have been a chance. You and KZ and everyone never Probably linked. Not, me and bro. you never linked. Me and Sully never even linked. Like, COVID really sat everyone else's down in the house. And it's like, that shit either made or bro- broke people. It really, I like, think, like, 2020 kind of forced people on a path for the next three years, for the next four years. Like, if you yeah. weren't set on a path, then you ain't really doing nothing. <laughs> literally, bro. <laughs> there ain't nothing for you to do. You just got to be, like, an NPC or something. But, like, 2020, you literally... Was forced to f- set a path, and honestly, that's when I really was like, "Let me actually be a good musician." Yeah. Like, let me if I'm stuck in a house and I have all this equipment, let me just be the best at what I do. Yeah. And I, I did that, so still getting better though. Still getting better. Oh, motherfucker, you be getting better by the fucking day. I'm talking about fucking. We're talking about throwbacks and stuff. We're gonna start at the beginning of the line. Man, I know you about to say in the ivory. In the ivory. In the ivory. Because I already know university, <coughs> all that whole phase. Y'all yeah, want to watch let's, it. Let's, let's start where bro. we're currently at. Yeah, now. like, so in the ivory, watching, bro. y'all could see that. That album, to me, was the most personal thing I've created ever. Bro, I'm sorry. Before you go on this rant, the way you did that whole rollout and everything. Yeah. And just how good the music is, that shit should have been like a billboard charting album. It, it has like, it had the potential too. Like, like that shit, you really you you I'ma stop talking, bro. I'm in a talkative ass mood, but you take I could have blew up yo. off of that, yo. Like it, I could have been making songs with Thames. Bro, I want you to t- just explain. She could have remixed them like, of those songs. Yeah, like explain all of this shit Burner to the boy could have remixed all of that. So right. basically, you want me to just run through the yeah, whole thing? Yeah, like run through cause bro, you fucking were sitting there. Seeing those videos of you in Africa doing all this shit, it was right, fucking yeah, so yeah. Life was fire, great. Life bro. was different. Like, so I had an idea for an album, right? And it was going to be something completely different. Then I got word we were going back to Africa and Ivory Coast. So I was like, oh, I got to make a project about that. Like, I can't just, like, 
you know, it's going to be an experience. I was going to make music about that regardless. So we go over there and my goal is to like connect with my people, connect with the culture, connect with the music scene and just really be there and then make music based off of that. So that's what I had in mind. Obviously, like be my family. I haven't seen them in mad long, all that stuff. But behind the scenes, I was clicking up. I was clicking up on the plane. Bro, in the airport, when I was in France, I'll have my laptop opened up on some Kanye type beat yeah. at the airport cooking up because I was just like, I got to I gotta get ready for this because it's not like, I think up until that point, the last time I went to Ivory Coast was when I was four. God damn. So I'm like, I'm going back to the motherland. I got to get my mind right because especially if I plan on making art about this, yeah. got to get my mind right. So I got my mind right. So then we get there and... I see my all right, so I see my older sister. I haven't seen her for like seven years. Damn. She got kids and all of that. So I'm over there. And life is just so different, bro. I haven't spent time with her since I was like 12, 13. Shh. And she sees me now as some some Grown big man, dude, bro. no cop, talking about oh, I make music. <laughs> She's like, so like just that environment was so interesting, but also so lit because the sun, the food. The, all of that So I was like Okay this is gonna be fun I'm gonna take my time With this album So A lot of the beats I made over there I even recorded Some demos over there Fire. And like Yeah the whole I knew I had to Tell a story So I was focused on What that story Was gonna be about But then When I was there I found myself Like trying too hard Damn Like I'd wake up Every day And like search For inspiration Or I'd Damn. be like How do I Put this day in a song Or how do I do this and that Trying to force the process For something that should have been so natural So it took so long I was there for like two months by the way God damn bro. Maybe three God damn I remember you were gone like that whole summer Yeah I was I was summer. not around So the first half of me being out there I was lit I was like this is lit This is cool Then in the middle I was kind of like I gotta make this album I gotta make this album I gotta finish this I gotta shoot some videos while I'm out here I don't wanna waste any time just thinking, I was seeing everything as a resource, bro, as, like, an opportunity. And then I hit that wall when I was like, I just can't do this. I have to just be here. Bro, there was no Wi-Fi, bro. I couldn't bro. call nobody. Yeah. Couldn't text. Like, whenever I, I had to find the good hours of the day to, like, for the Wi-Fi to be bussing, bro. Jesus Christ. And it was, bro. like, it was, like, 8 in the morning. If I wasn't up at 8, Shh. I was not on my phone, bro. Fuck that. Bro. There was one time where, like, it was so noisy in the crib because it was, like, 13 of us. Jesus. And, like, I went outside. Mind you, it was dark outside. Them, them mosquitoes at night. Bro. It was dark outside, bro. bro. I brought my laptop, my mic. I'm, like, I need to record this demo. Shh. So you can literally hear the birds, and I'm not I'm not the birds, but like the bugs, the uh, the grasshoppers, and all that stuff That's in the fine. background. Fucked, I'm hip, but once I learned, like, yo, I gotta like let this be. Like, I have to like, if it was in me to make this album, it'll make itself. I just have to put it there. Like, I just gotta be in position to like, like what I was saying about communication, because yeah. a lot of people don't really know what it's like to be in Africa. A lot of Africans. That are in America African Americans don't really know What it's like To be in Africa And where I was at Wasn't like I wasn't in no like Mud huts But I also wasn't in like The ville You feel me yeah. I was I was kind of in between yeah. So I didn't get the luxury But I didn't get the The slums either yeah. So it was like that Middle ground People don't know about And people don't even believe There's a, a ground above that They yeah. think it's really like Just dirt They yeah. think it's like Just just trees and lions That you're running for For your life But I'm like That's not it So I need to like that's why I really emphasize the content too. Nikki was with me, so we was shooting like every day. We was out, we was shooting, we was filming. So I really wanted to build the world of like Africa. This is how I see it. This is how it is. Ivory Coast. This is what it is for me, for my family. So the emphasis on family, on self discovery, on like just vibe, good vibes. That was my mission. I had to strip everything down. I'm like, don't try to tell a story. Don't try to be like. All these other Afrobeat artists just don't just be you where you are. You feel yeah. me? That's where you get songs like um healing wounds, like um Baka Boy. Literally, that song is about the bus. Simple stuff. I really had to strip it down. I'm like, bro, you don't gotta overthink this. Like you're literally overseas living with your people. Yeah. Anything like anything is a story. 
Literally, bro, my, my cousin, my I mean, my nephew was outside playing, and a kid he was playing with scratched his knee, hurt himself, he was crying. And then I went out to help him, gave him some water, patched up his band, like um, his scratch or whatever, came in the house, and I recorded Healing Wounds because I literally healed somebody's That wound. shit is crazy. Simple yeah. stuff like that. When I, like, really let go, I was able to have life tell me what should be said in the simplest ways. Like, I don't need to be a doctor to say I healed somebody. I don't even need to do stitches to say I, healed, I can heal somebody emotionally. So once I like, I had to look at everything like with that lens of like, what is the deeper meaning behind what I'm going through? Because I didn't say, oh, let me let me go to Africa to make an album. It was just because my sister was getting married and we had to like, we had to take a trip. So I used that as a way of like, let me explore creatively. So then I think it's like, it's 11 tracks. Um, Damn, why did I think there was more on that? Because it feels like it. It has a fucking replay value. <laughs> I'm saying yeah, it, it, <laughs> like, I'm honestly so happy that it came out how it did. And, like, I had to give my boy KZ a mission. I was like, bro, I know you never did this genre before, but we got to mix and master this whole thing. Because when I came back, I had a lot of drafts and some, some songs I made, like, when I came back, just to reflect yeah. on it. So he helped me record it, he helped me mix it, and he helped me master it. So shout out to KZ, that's Big Dog. Album came out pretty crazy. And personally, I think... I remember y'all motherfuckers <coughs> stressing. I'm going to put that side note in. I remember the way they were in here. These motherfuckers at one point, bro. I remember I walked in one day and y'all looked like you was about to cry. I forget what it was, bro. bro. Y'all bro. y'all were stressing trying to get that shit done at one because point. Because it's like we take this music so seriously, bro. I feel you, bro. We do. Like, it'd be the littlest things, bro. So, yeah, we, we finished it, recorded everything. And, um, and Brockton here, I don't think we was in the garage with it, but. Yeah, I think Garage was over. Yeah, that point, yeah. That album basically, I, like as an artist, I was like, I need to show people where I'm from. I need to show people who I am on a deeper level, on an ethnic level. So I, uh, I love that album because it allowed me to do that. Uh, so I, I needed to hit that stop before I moved to the next stop. So if anyone's interested, Afro Beats, know about my culture, just listen to that album. It tells you everything. I feel like that, even though you have university and you have other projects out before, I feel like that's like the definitive like intro stubborn sound. I think so. I think that was a goal too, so I like that. Bro, you know the annoying part though? I'm at that stage right now with that album where it's like I just overplayed the fuck out of it, bro. Mm. I overplayed. I had to stop listening to it for a while too. Yeah, bro. Like that's my problem. If I fuck with music, I'm the type of motherfucker I will listen to that shit on repeat for months straight until I'm just like, I don't want to hear it anymore. Like mm. and that and then a good thing it's a good thing and i like a bad it thing. Yeah. i like it like, ran my streams up bro i'm fucking give me those bro. 25 pennies that's what i mean bro <laughs> i probably ran up a good fucking 25 cents of things <laughs> don't fucking stop calling me i literally tell people yo i'm in a podcast i can't talk my phone be going if off, they were bro. cool i would say pick it up but i don't know what that is so never they mind. are cool but i'm still not it's literally it's calvin ken i'm not picking calvin. it up still bro yeah, scratch that next time boy bro but that in the ivory was fucking beautiful and then red Fi- did you draw you drop red fantasies too too. Yeah, okay, because I'm not, bro, that's what, I can't even, like, keep up, bro, because it went from, you were, like, in that, like, Playboy Cardi phase, where mm-hmm. it's, like, everyone's just, like, where the fuck is the music, where the fuck is the music, mm-hmm. you dropped in the ivory, then you, like, disappeared for a little, and then you just came back consistent as fuck, and I couldn't keep track of shit, but then, yeah. in between that, in the ivory gap, two red fantasies, I kind of want you to talk about how you got into that bag with that shit, because that, red fantasies? red fantasies was, like, even though in the ivory was, like, <laughs> so different, it was like perfect for you. Red fantasies was just some shit I just didn't expect out the, at all. Ooh, like everything, bro. Out the way. Yeah. So see the the crazy thing is the project like that, that was in my head before in the ivory. Really? That's fucking crazy. That's why low key, I was low key ready to go with that. I, once in the ivory was out, I was like, all right, all right, all right. Let's do something else. Yeah. You feel me? But I still needed like, in Ivory, I'm still going to run that back. Like, I might do something for the anniversary. Fire. Definitely got to drop some music videos. Yeah. But when it was out and I had the content going, just everything's just, like, automated, going crazy, I was like, all right, what's next? Oh, I got to go back to that Red Fantasy vibe. I got to start rolling that out. You feel me? So, the idea, I mean, you got to ask me something about it. I can't just... Just in general... Because, well, you just said that it was a thing before, but yeah. you went from in the ivory to that, which is like, 
So the process in between, the right? The process in between and how the fuck did you make such... It, not a genre shift because it's like Sal... Sal is his own genre. It's literally just like yeah. genre list. Even though you're calling that, um, in the Ivory Afro beat, obviously like the beats are Afro beats, but you it's literally have crazy like, fusion. Bro, it's just like Sal. Sal every, genre. every genre that I touch, I fuse it with Stubborn yeah, and then bro. it becomes its own thing. Like, But... The whole like motivation behind that, cause bro, you got that shit so cohesive. All the different yeah. pictures of you with the red mask and shit, and then you got oh, what's my shit, bro? I option no again. Go ahead, I got, yeah, bro. That was my shit. Crazy. Bro. I made that song like in 2021. I'm, I know, cause I don't know. You've if you been, were, bro. You've been heard that one. The, do you remember the night that you played it to me for the first time? That was the night I fell asleep while recording, standing up. <laughs> yeah. That was the night. That's crazy. Bro, like my I, boy be dedicated. I remember that night vividly though, because I remember it was like an hour before that happened. I was hyped as fuck, and then an hour later, I'm falling asleep standing up, bro. That's what my music <laughs> does sometimes. I go to sleep listening to my music sometimes. Bro, you got that <coughs> peaceful. I'm talking about other people, but even me, bro. Like you got just like that peaceful ass shit. Like peaceful ass shit. You literally, your music is so peaceful. If I have like a long ass drive, I will literally skip through your songs sometimes because you have nighttime drive music. And then the but, daytime. No, Sheesh. but what I was going to say, you have nighttime music that's good as fuck, but some of the shit literally be so relaxing. I'm like, bro, I uh -huh. can't play this shit because I'm going to fall asleep. Like, it's yeah. just like calming, bro. Therapeutic. Bro, that shit, you, Sal, Sal makes fucking calm down Therapeutic, music. Therapeutic, bro. bro. The if, calm down like, music. If you need to end an anxiety attack, listen to Stubborn Sal. Exactly. <laughs> but I want the concept behind it. I don't want right, to hear how so, you came up so, with that. So I dropped two minutes away as a shift away from In the Ivory. And then I was like, all right, I got to tell my story now. And the Ivory is about me. It's about my culture. The Red Fantasies is an introduction about me as a person. You feel me? That's why I wanted to emphasize the mask because people don't know me. So that's why I got the mask on. People don't know me. And Why the red mask? Why that out of everything? Because it's called the Red Fantasies. So I got to put on a red mask. Oh, so you had the name before that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But I mean, I could I could really break down the big picture, right? So the big picture is, I'm working on an album, right? And this album is called Red Room, and it's about to go crazy. You ain't even heard nothing on it. It's like Wait, it's you got a deep new one. The, yeah, <coughs> I got an album. My bad, I had to check that text. But I can't just drop the album because I know yeah. I know what it is. So I'm like, I gotta drop EPs to lead up to it. I gotta like start that vibe, like how I dropped like um Remedy and Need Your Number before In Ivory. Yeah, I gotta drop the fantasies before this album. Damn, so the EPs are basically <coughs> singles off the, the album in a way. Low key to like big package singles. That's fucking crazy. So that's my mind like with it. So when you go to the Red Fantasies, it's like it's my view of the world I live in. That's why it's called the fantasies because it's not reality. It's just my perspective. My perspective is not reality when it's tainted red. So I, I tainted it red with the mask. And yeah, basically the, the, the point of me like rolling that out was to symbolize one, I'm moving away from the ethnic vibe more towards my personal vibe. And I've been through a lot and I did a lot. So that's why like I'll try to hide my character a lot because I feel like it's too much for people. So I put the mask on. That's why... In songs like Go Ahead or I Don't Like Your Friends, it's kind of like me pushing people away because I'm like, you're not going to understand me. In fact, I might even make you not like me just because of who I am. Even um, the first track, the interlude, and like all of it is just about me overthinking myself. So I put a lot of my own thoughts into it, but I also don't want to own it as my thoughts. That's why I put the mask on. That's like... The duality of it. It's like, you know it's me, but you don't know because I have a mask on. And we just took a whole left turn from where we was at before. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So, yeah. Anybody watching this, I hope you guys can see how apparent it is that this motherfucker is a true artist. Because I was going to say no shade, but all shade to you fucking every artist around here for the most part. People just are so flavorless with just throwing shit out. There's no passion behind it. And it's like... This is how the shit is supposed to be, bro. You gotta people, cook it up, man. Bro, people look at music like a product too much, and it's like, bro, this shit uh. is art. And it's like, that's what every everybody should be doing it. But also, it's good that everybody doesn't do it, because then when you have somebody like you that does, it's such a breath of fresh air, because there's yeah. actual substance there. But 
people just don't be doing that shit anymore. Taking like the, the way you're talking, the duality, everything. People will not sit there and think of a message. Because remember that what I okay. said, bro. To be yourself, you need to know yourself. People make music thinking they can find themselves through the money they make or the people they meet or the shows they like. None of that is gonna do anything for you except move you in a specific direction. You won't even determine that direction if you don't know yourself. That's why when I try to make something or when I get into making something, I have to look inward first. And I think that's what true artists do. True artists look at what they have to get across and then they go through every possible way to get it across. So with the Red Fantasies, that's my way of getting across the album. You feel me? Like I'm rolling this thing out. Is the album done already? I ain't going to talk about it. Okay, okay. I might talk about it later, but okay, okay, we're on the okay. fantasies right now. Okay, One okay. major piece, like I'm, I love the music, I love the songs on that project on the Red Fantasies Volume One, but that cover art did it for me. Once I got that cover art, I was like, nah, Bro. I could, I could literally drop this with blank songs and I'd promote it and post it because of the cover art. Damn, that cover art was fire. Bro. Man, the story of how that came is crazy. Okay. That was like literally, I think it was like. One of my first, like, intentional photo shoots for a cover art. So, I knew it was going to come out crazy. But I was with my best friend, right, Shy. She's a photographer. She's a model. She does, she's a lot, she does a lot in the, in the media, industry field, modeling, all that stuff. So, I was like, yo, I need some cover art. I need, I'm working on this project. We need to work on a cover art. She was like, bet. I got you. I'll set up the whole spot, like, the whole space, everything, yada, yada, yada. We'll get it done. So I pull up, right? I forgot my camera. <laughs> this is the most sal shit I've heard, already. bro. I'm telling. That's why already, I was mad. This is the most I was sal so shit mad, heard, bro. I'm telling you, bro. I was so heated. Yeah. I was. I don't even think I rushed to leave the house. I was just so lit that I'm about to get some dope pictures. Left the camera, bro. Left the lights. I had nothing. I had bro. nothing, bro. I pulled up to the spot. I looked through my bag. I didn't see anything. I was like, yeah, she's going to kill me. She's going to kick me out. She's going to be like, you wasting my time. You're a bum. I was like, yeah, it's over with. I can't even say this. I waited like 30 minutes to be like, yeah, I don't got the camera. Bro, yeah. <laughs> I don't got the yeah. camera. I don't got the lights. I think it's, oh, I like the setup. It's cool. Yeah. But I'm going to head on out because I don't got nothing. But she's creative. So guess what? We shot that on an iPhone. I was taking up. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. On an iPhone. How the f I don't even know where the light came from. Have you seen this cover art before? Go go on Apple and the look at this Fantasies. shit, bro. Cause it's the yeah, dopest, yeah. most cleanest, like the composition. Bro. That was like the craziest tag team I've had in a minute. What I came up fuck? with the I came up with the um I gotta wear a mask. I gotta wear like something like that. I don't know. I was just throwing stuff together, right? I was like, it needs to be red and we need a contrast. She was like, the contrast should be blue. And the background should be reflective, and like, I don't know if she, I don't know if I was posed. I think I just knew what it would, but like we we like bounced back and forth ideas and stuff. Crazy collab cover art came out crazy. We took mad different pictures. When I was scrolling through them, that one just spoke to me. I was like, yeah, that looks like who is in the Red Fantasies. So I chose Shit, it. Perfect, bro. It's literally almost like a character, even though it's yourself. Like it literally is like you That's built what I'm a character. Saying, up Cause bro, shit, bro, like. The whole vibe around the Red Fantasies is me in my head experiencing what I experienced on the outside. It's like, it's really self-reflective in the worst way. <laughs> it's all your fuck-ups. Basically, <laughs> your fuck that's really what it, like, that, project. the whole idea behind Red is like the Red symbolizes my mistakes, my trauma, my, all my bad stuff. And the fantasy is how I interpret that because it's not real. It's how I see it. Like, you know, when you go through something and you just start thinking about the worst and it might not be a big deal, but to you, it's like the end of the world. Yeah. That's what that is. And then volume two, Star Child is on volume two and Key Linda's on volume two. I don't, I think that's it. Yeah. Is there another feature or am I tripping? On volume one? On volume two. Why do I feel like there's one more? Am I tripping? Huh? Huh. There's two. I don't know why I thought that there was more. There's right. two. I'll volume the two is coming volume out. Two. Wait, I thought volume two is out. Nah. What I don't the know fuck? what you're talking about. What's a picture I'm thinking of of you like in front of like some like bar and looking shit? 
If oh, Red with- Cabin. That's a single. That, oh, okay. Why did I think Yo, that that everybody was- go listen. Like, if you're watching this, pause it and go listen to Red Cabin. Yo. Go I'm listen to Red Cabin. About- I'm tripping. Why did I think Yeah, some people thought that was like the the other one. Am I tripping or were you going to drop Red Fantasies 2 before you dropped How to Be Stubborn? And that's why I think that. Because I remember you literally telling... That's when we were originally going to do this podcast. Mm-hmm. You were like, I was like, yo, Fantasy 2 yeah, is coming like, out. Yo, this motherfucker be the biggest clickbait-ass motherfucker in nah. the world. Because you be telling it me... It ain't even like Yo, that. bro, this album's about to come out. Then you got me hype being a it little cheerleader. Even. And then it's like, okay, yeah, you're actually getting a completely even. different album and you got to wait months. <laughs> like, goddamn, bro. I'm only going to do it at a handful of times in my career. Bro. That was one. I, ha- I had to drop that, bro. Yeah, Because you know something, bro? I make a lot of music... Different vibes And like There's seasons From my type of vibes How to be stubborn Would have came out In like 2027 If I didn't drop it I had to Yeah, That's how I was feeling too You need to start doing that With all your shit Because like Bro I don't know how the fuck You have so much shit That isn't out already And that all the new shit It seems like right now You're at the stage Where literally all the shit Just keeps getting delayed Because you just make new shit That's also fire Tight beat And it's not even like Any of the music that is old It's not like you outgrew it Or anything Like it literally Like I said It's time and shit bro I'm gonna show you some Some stuff but like you talking about the vault. You don't know about the vault today Today I couldn't imagine bro Sheesh I couldn't imagine bro But um Yeah about the fantasies Volume 2 was supposed to come out Like soon after that But It's gonna come out Sometime this year so when I was waiting on that On them files And like waiting on the situations and stuff I'm like yo I've been recording mad trap I've been rapping a lot I might as well just drop a, a rap tape Cause I have to Right I can't just I can't just be singing all the time I'm not trying to be like an R&B artist yeah. I, I'm an artist So I had to drop How to be stubborn And what I dropped first Chrome 72 That beat I had since college bro Bro. I was gonna you say guys that pulling beat. these old beats out of nowhere that you just made. You know what it on. is? A lot of good producers. I might be just chatting, but for me, I think a lot of goaded producers hold beats for artists in the industry because they know, like, like for example, I was saving that beat for Lil Yachty. God damn! I think Lil Yachty would have went crazy on that beat. Like, you definitely would have. I'm saying so. I was like, I'm gonna just wait. I'm gonna just wait till I blow up. Has to be soon. A year passes. Maybe this guy can blow up and he can hop on the beat. You know what I'm saying? Oh. I'm going to just hold it. Another year passes. I'm like, all right, bro. <laughs> I'm not blowing up this year. Put this shit out, bro. <laughs> I'm like, I just got to put it out, bro. Yeah, oh, oh, At least he can remix it or something. Yeah, bro. So I dropped that as a single. And I think I dropped Vigilante too, bro. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. pause this if you're watching it and go listen to Vigilante. Disclaimer, that song is tough. Dude, the whole project is like tough. That song is the tough. The whole project is as fuck. I literally like how to be stubborn is literally how to be stubborn. Nah, no. Like every <laughs> song on that project bro. is a mood that I have that it's like this is me being stubborn, bro. To the intro, the second song, all of them. All of them. Bro, how how did you feel? What was your mind when you was first going through that pro- like when you first listened to it? Bro. <clears throat> I like don't even know. I think for me, it was just the beauty of people being able to see that you could like actually rap. Because mm-hmm. I feel like I've seen you rap for like fucking four years, but I feel like everybody just knows you as that singy dude. So the whole entire Same. time, like I was happy to get more music for it, but I feel like more so it was going through my head. I'm like, finally, people could see that. this. Dude That's exactly why I dropped it, bro. I was like, people haven't seen me like spit bars. I honestly, bro, being straight up, I did not think that that was going to... When you told me you were dropping a project, I did not think that's what it was going to sound like. Yeah. I did not think that's what it was going to be at all. You never know, bro. That's what I mean, bro. I was expecting, like, some, like, Moonlight Hill type shit. Like, nah, that vibe is coming back, like... Good. A lot of my vibes, bro, they, like, circulate in seasons. I might drop some new Afro beats this year, too. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say it, but me and Neezy got a track. Uh, he posted it. Me and Easy got a track. It's Afro beat. Didn't he post it like two days ago? I'm not tripping. Maybe like, yeah, two days ago. I think yesterday. literally I saw him post some shit. It might have been yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that project had to come out, bro, because I need to get everything out before I lock in on this album. So, then volume two is coming out. When volume two comes out, just know we're going to be in the red for a minute. Damn. And the red is not just R&B either. I'm talking about like house music. I'm talking about like like the red room. Is the room where anything could happen. Expect anything, but expect nothing at the same time. 
Man, the anticipation, bro. I know everybody that's watching this that's a South fan is just like... Oh, dying. Just, hey, bro, you'd be, you'd be fucking depriving. If, Actually, bro, no, you're not thing, depriving bro. your fans anymore. You're not depriving <coughs> I've been anymore. feeding the streets. I was going to say, you've been fucking turning these motherfuckers obese But you know rate. what? I, have, I haven't I have been feeding the eyes. I've been feeding the ears, but I haven't been feeding the eyes. Nah, bro. lately you've been feeding the eyes. Lately, I draw one bro. video, bro. No, I'm talking about like the, the shit I'm talking about, like the fucking micro content, bro. Oh, All yeah, those fish yeah, eye yeah. lens videos. Yeah, and shit, yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you've been feeding it that way. But also, too, since we're talking about videos right now, what was the name of the one that you guys shot on the phone? Sending. Yeah, bro. Yeah, with the fish eye. Dude, that shit, just like the energy on it. Like I be hearing that a lot. Like, it was just so like... It was just so casual. Like, yeah. it literally seems like you were like, yo, I feel like filming a music video right now. Like, fuck mm-hmm. it. Like, it literally seems like it was like that. It Like, that wasn't the goal. Like, that wasn't the mission, but that's like what I wanted people to feel. Yeah. I wanted it to feel like you're literally with me throughout my day. And that's kind of what it was. It literally felt like that. Like the scenes, you, I like a lot of the scenes in it, but my favorite ones are the ones literally where it's just you driving around holding the camera. Yeah. Like, yourself. like I don't know why. It's just like, bro, this shit is fire. Bro, I hit a curb like three times, yeah. bro. <laughs> I was like, I got to make sure I'm locked in. Yo, bro. I was locked in on recording, not driving, bro. Bro that needed that crazy. Tesla right there. <laughs> that shit in autopilot. That bro. thing would have drove me right to the police station. Yeah, probably. Nah, bro. I don't know. Shit, I know Tesla. Elon Musk going to be looking at you like, oh, no cap. Shit. Me going broad stream like live stream me on X. Bro, look at this crazy. <laughs> this like, crazy. This motherfucker sitting here making a music video while driving in my me. Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Crash it. Oh, yeah. That'd be crazy. But I would get a truck though. You know them them Tesla trucks. Bro, you know the fucked up part. Sheesh. I've had one on pre order since. Um, yep. Yeah. Twenty on pre order. Yeah, like I got. What was I? No. Was I in the first thousand? I think. <clears throat> It might have been either first hundred or first thousand, bro. I had like a pre-order slot in those, and I, I was like gonna buy it, and then I'm like, nah. I'm like, I, oh, you you pulled your spot. Yeah, well, I the fucking could have sold it at first, but then <laughs> my my plan was because I kept it pre-ordered because I'm like these shits are gonna go for fucking crazy over sticker, and then Tesla posted what was it? Is it fifty k? If you if you sell a, a car, car, if you sell it within the first <coughs> year, or if you give somebody your allocation. They literally had written in there, they announced right before the car dropped, it's like a 50K automatic lawsuit from Tesla. So I was like, fuck it. Because I was just yeah, going to buy no, it and no. sell it right away. But You could have made bank. That's what I mean, bro. I feel like, like even if it was a lawsuit, but you still got that money, you could have paid that off. Yeah, no. It depends. Though. I don't know how much some shits are going for. I know everyone I know in LA, though, they've seen that they're like ugly. Like, like on the inside? No, like everyone that's seen them in person that I've heard of so far, they're like, bro, really? that shit does not look like... I'm surprised because it looks like... It looks pretty solid. It looks fire, but everyone that's in LA that I know, they've literally just been like, "Bro, wait till you see it in person. Like, it's not what it looks and like." You know, that's the it's thing with um with social media. Everything just looks way better than yeah. it actually is, bro. People like, too. Oh God, bro! <laughs> like people, everything, yo, yo, y'all people. motherfuckers. <clears throat> this don't be actually no. All y'all dudes that be sitting there, and I go on your Instagram, and you fucking have designer everything, and y'all motherfuckers owe me money. Cut that corny shit out. And also, too, all y'all females that you look online, and then I meet you in person, and you look like a completely different person, y'all need to cut that shit out, bro. Talk about be yourself, act, bro. Cut the act. That shit Love be, yourself, man. If yo, you broke, be broke happy, bro. If right. you ugly, be ugly happy. Literally, bro. Like, Please. Motherfuckers. You're hurting the children. Fake shit, bro. Nah. Like, especially, too. Motherfuckers, stop Photoshopping shit, bro. I'm t- that's one Photoshopping thing. Photoshopping that like, somebody is crazy. Yo, like, motherfuckers at every time, like, how you have enough effort that every time you post, like, the slightest thing, you got to go sit there, Photoshop the shit, amplify this, that. Bro, that that's crazy. Recently, I seen some crazy bro, Photoshop the, pictures. Yo, the crazy thing is. People they, I see in person, bro. I see them online. Yo, I'm like. They be yeah. good at it. Because sometimes you genuinely will not notice until, like, they you be, said you see them in person. They be you know, paying like, people or something because hold on. They be getting good at that shit, though. I gotta how you look, problems, how you look 40 at 20 yeah. but <laughs> online you look 18 yeah, bro. like straight up it makes sense cuz it don't make sense i say it all the time fuck the internet era but also at the same time i'm so thankful for the internet era cuz it makes everything yeah. so much easier i'm not going to lie i try not to be an old head sometimes but i definitely am I don't i'm just sense. good at being young yeah, cuz Otherwise, I'd be hating on everybody. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, I'd be waking up, bro. I'd be choosing violence in the morning. I feel you with that, bro. I'm the same exact like, way, bro. 
I got to remind myself, bro. I'm like, yo, if I don't pray today, someone's getting hurt. <laughs> and it might be me. Like, for real. I got to be praying it up, bro. Stubborn wakes up and chooses violence. And Every day. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Especially and if I wake up before my alarm. Yeah. That'd be the worst, bro. The worst be when you like... Man, You're trying to get that extra sleep and somebody call you like 20 minutes before your alarm go off, bro, I'll be wanting to kill people. Bro, <laughs> I'm like, because like, now I'm going back to sleep for like another five hours, bro. No, I know. Got to catch up on them two like, minutes. <laughs> Dude, that shit <laughs> always happens. You're like, yo, I'm going to get two more minutes. Next thing you know, it's like an hour after your alarm was supposed to go off. You're like, fuck, I'm waiting. I be where. happening to me like crazy. Bro. You know what the secret, bro? You got to put your phone far from where you go to sleep. So you can't touch it. Yeah. So when it, when that alarm goes off and it's across the room, you have to get up. Yeah, bro. You have to. I need to start doing that. I need to like buy a physical alarm clock because I don't know. My phone is nah, glitching. You're, gonna, you're probably going to kill yourself. Yeah, bro. I'll probably beat that shit up. But <laughs> fucking, yo, I don't know nah. what was happening. Not even me like snoozing it or nothing. It was like probably like two weeks ago, bro. He knows because we see each other and working every morning. Yo, for like three, four days straight. My alarms would not go off. I'd literally go in my phone. Them shits were all set. I woke up late for like four days straight. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I reset my phone and the shit never happened again. But my shit dead ass didn't go off for like four days straight. I was like, dang. Shit, See, that could know. cost you a job, bro. That's what I mean. I'm like, <laughs> damn, bro. That could Thank cost God. you a job. Like, Speaking like, of jobs, I feel like jobs should be eliminated, bro. Bro. I swear we don't need those. Like, bro. I swear we don't need those. We don't need so many things. Like, the thing is with like the working society... It's fucked up because it shouldn't be needed, but also then you think about all the people that would sit there and literally do, like, nothing. Like, you, me, if we didn't have a job, we have a (coughs) bunch of other shit that we know we would be devoting our time to. You got other motherfuckers, bro, that couch gonna fucking absorb them, and they're gonna (laughs) fall into the back rooms, yo. Like, that ass, bro. (laughs) Like, them motherfuckers. Then they can start a community in the back rooms, bro, and just leave leave the land to us, bro. (laughs) Because, dang. God, please stick all the NPCs in the back room so we can have the fun the NPCs, people. NPCs, bro. bro. Keep the main characters. Yeah, like, all the NPCs. Bro, yo, we don't need them, we bro. We're sticking them all in the back room, bro. Because it's crazy. I be working. When I when I be working, bro, and I look around at, like, the 50-year-olds, <laughs> they've been like, yeah, I've been working here for 30 years. Like, I'm like, wow, oh, bro. Like, Congratulations, bro. Like, you missed all out in the bag, bro. Uh, bro. That's a shit. Like oh. honestly, that's probably one thing I fear the most. All respect to people that like love going to work. Even if they hate it and still do, that's like that's that's respect. Me personally, if I knew I was gonna work a job for thirty years, I would just move to an island. I'm like, I'm cooling it with the monkeys at that point. Oh god, bro. Chilling with the gorillas. Like if y'all need me to build this hut, I'll yeah. do it. If I gotta get bananas, I'll do it. Oh, I don't need no wages. <laughs> I just need the food and the shelter, bro. Yeah, bro. Like, it's crazy. Shit. I don't know how people be doing that shit, bro. Because they have to. They're yeah, programmed to. I know. But that's the thing. The, like, society's so fucked, bro. And I always have been a big preacher of this. Schools really be doing it to motherfuckers. Because the way that the school... <laughs> no, like... They be doing it yo, for real, bro. Like, dead ass. Cause, like, yo, it's they like, almost got me, bro, too. Yo, school on God, if you really break it down, <clears throat> that shit... Like, yeah, you could get other lessons from life. And there are some people that actually do gain shit from school. But yeah. overall, if you really break it down, it literally just looks like it's a system that's meant to teach you to do shit that you don't want to do every day. Do it for the same hours as a job, X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, like, that's how the way I look at it. They're just seasoning you to do shit for the rest of your life that you don't want to fucking Pretty do Pretty much. Day, bro. It's like elementary school gets you ready for middle school. Middle school gets you ready for high school. They hype it up like you're about to go to prison like crazy. Yeah, bro. Like, oh, you think this homework's bad? Wait till bro. you get to high school. Like, bro, it's the same. It's even less in high school. And then high school gets you ready for college. And then college gets you ready for the workforce. And the workforce gets you ready to just limit yourself and do nothing else. Literally. Mainly college. But I mean, like, I can I could acknowledge that some careers in the college Are lane, needed. They're, they're needed. Like, yeah. if my lawyer doesn't have a degree... And being a lawyer, <laughs> I probably lawyer. don't want him around. You feel me? But college should only be for like those careers, not sure. jobs. Careers, careers are necessary. Jobs should be optional, honestly. Yeah, no. Especially because yeah. I mean, I'm not an advocate for like AI taking over human tasks, but I mean, it's gonna happen. So. It is, bro. If you're going to school for six years to have a job that in two years will be taken by a robot, that kind of played yourself, bro. bro. That shit is scary, bro. 
It's scary yeah. too, like, because that shit be so advanced. There's a chance of that even happening with music. Like you, it already, bro. I'm telling you right say, now, you bro. You saw the shit in China. It's already happening. That's, That's why I'm mean. trying to get up now. Because if if that All takes right. over before I blow up, I'm not going nowhere, bro. <laughs> Yo, if AI is going the reason, nowhere. All the talented motherfuckers I know don't blow up, bro. God, we're gonna have to kill the computers. We like, might actually have to go to war. Straight up, bro. Like. like that's crazy because it's like it's possible bro if i if i uploaded one of my songs to an ai program and i told it to make more music with my voice do that shit perfectly no cap all the artists listen to this that have no drive don't do that (laughs) if you don't got drive don't have ai do it for you bro because if i find out i'm gonna kill all the hard drives that's gonna be the fucked up part is when like shit like that happens where it actually get out bro i will actually ai shit i will be the most diabolical person and this is on record too. So if I see it happen, yeah. I already know. Like, yep, I'll be right yep. there with you. If it's someone we know, and I find out that shit, bro, I'd be like, like yep, I don't know, bro. Because like, I was reading this book about like art and AI and how they're. I I didn't finish it, so I don't really know what it was saying. But I know it was talking about like, can AI create art? Like, would it be considered art? And I still don't know. I really don't think so. Because then you got to think about it. AI only takes everything that it's given, right? Unless we try to debate, like, whether it has a conscience or not. Uh, but even if it did, what would it say? Like, what message would it communicate through paint, <laughs> through music, like a human can? Like, a human has an experience, and they, they relay that through art. A robot, what it got to relate through art? It just has what we already made, you feel me? Even, like... Some AI like cover arts and stuff. Half of the time, they're taking art that already exists and just repacking it into something else. It's like remixing. AI just remixes stuff. That's why I don't. I don't think an artist should create a whole piece of work from it. I will say though, video effects and for photoshopping shit. Oh, AI is key. Uh, yeah, I bro. I'm not, <laughs> yo, like the, that's the, the thing that sucks, yo, bro. I be trying to like. I'm like. Visuals with AI versus bro. music with AI. Is there a difference? Yeah, like visuals. Complete. Is there a difference, bro? I don't know. I feel like yeah, because I'm not even talking about the shit where it makes itself. Have you have you used or watched somebody use AI in Photoshop yet? Mm-hmm. Bro, so like you saw the bad habits cover for the song we just did with Tempo. Mm-hmm. So that literally was a picture of a rib cage from a T like T shirt. It was a picture of a rib cage of a t-shirt? from a Walmart t-shirt of a skeleton. Oh. And it was just the ribs. And Sam literally on FaceTime was punching shit in AI. And it literally extended the picture, turned it into an actual skeleton, turned it X-ray, X, Y, and Z. Like literally like AI extended that whole, it wasn't like AI edited all the shit. Like Sam just edited like all that. It and stuff. But that shit literally made a neck and made the arms and made everything like that AI. Liam son. Yeah. Like, and I, that was my first time seeing it. And I was like, yo. This shit Damn is son. crazy. It like bro. did that like in what seconds? Yo, like literally you type in like, oh, do this, <coughs> blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, goes from just a rib cage to a fucking full human skeleton. Nah, that's wild like, though. This shit is crazy. Because then you could say like, oh, Sam directed it to do that. Yeah. Like. But it's a robot. That's, it's like the weirdest shit, bro. And all it like, did was extend the shit. But it's like, like say I took a picture of half that camera and then I wanted to extend it. AI mm-hmm. could dead ass probably put the other half based you on what it's me? like. It's nah, like I've done like those extended yeah. um edits before. That shit's crazy. It'd be kind of wild. Like that shit is crazy. You think you think, Miss, <laughs> Shy, you think there's a difference between AI visuals and AI music? I need a quick yes or no. Yeah. You think there's a difference? Like Creation, creative process. I was going to say the difference, I think, if you have, if you type in, yeah, like, if, because if, if you were just like, okay, make me this versus like, okay, like, use it as a tool extending, but also like, it's like the fine line, like I said, like the extending shit, like the way that we did that, I see that as like not interfering. But if you literally just type in, okay, this idea, this idea, this idea, this idea, and the AI makes the whole entire cover art, I do not see that as art. Mm. That I don't see as art. If it's all done by the computer and there's no actual physical labor besides your thoughts, that's not art. I feel like. Well, what do you what do you guys define art as? Yeah, that's important too. Well, if you think about it, so that photo shoot that we did, right? 
Mm-hmm. This is why I need to get the mics for the fucking back, like the way I've been talking about on every episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So art, art has a story. Art relays a message from experience. I feel like that's art. So if it don't got those, that's why, bro, when I hear people like, I'm just going to throw all the shade under the sun. When I hear music that doesn't speak anything, I'm like, you're not. It's not really art, bro. It's just a song. There's a difference between music and songs, bro. I feel like there's more songs being produced than music. I don't even. I think there might be a time where a majority of artists don't know how to make music. I honestly think you're saying a point in time. I think we're at that point in time, bro. I think the door is open. I don't know. I, per, I refuse to are. peep in it because that's a dangerous bro, world, bro. I feel like it low key is already, <laughs> bro. Because it's like, because I've I've seen a lot where I'm just like, bro. Don't send me none of this, bro. Yeah, I don't know bro. what this is. Like, I don't know what you thought it was. I could tell you right now, it'll only be <laughs> what you think it is right now. Yeah, it'll bro. be nothing more than that. So don't send it to me, bro. Yeah, like, the, some of this shit is just, like... It's kind of wild. But then, I don't, the thing with art, bro, I love art so much because of how complex it is. I know. Because we can say this about somebody's song, but can you say that about someone's painting? Can you say that about someone's sculpture? Yeah. Can you say that about somebody's, like, architecture? You can be like, yo, this building is ass, bro. Like, why does it, why the windows not lined up like this and they're like, like that? But like a song, I feel like certain art gets criticized way too much. And I'm honestly like, I be doing that too I'm sometimes. Too, bro. <laughs> but I mean, because I can like criticize specific kinds of art, I'm going to try to make it where all art can be under the same lens. I feel like there shouldn't be a difference. There only is because I'm a musician. That's why. If I was a sculptor, I could definitely flame some sculptures and be like, yo, this is not. Definitely. Yeah. That's definitely true. Damn, bro. Yeah, music, though. I don't know what the fuck going on with the mainstream industry. but bro, I mainstream sh- bro, is crazy. I should not, like, bro, I genuinely, and I know people are going to get mad because there are some good artists that have came out. Since, like, X Juice World and shit died, I really can't pinpoint, like, any artist that I've actually been invested into. It's literally all, like, you, Van Buren, KZ. Like, it's all people that I know who shit I'd be listening to. That that era of music, like, a lot of soul left with it, bro. And it's so sad, but it's also a very self-reflective thing of how you can have an artist like Juice World or X or Mac Miller... And just see how how much they impacted this whole thing, bro. I know. And their absence, like, does so much. It's crazy. That's like, it's it's weird to say it's inspiring. Yeah. Because they're deceased, but, like, the impact they made is inspiring. They, like, forever change shit. That is my ultimate, one of the many ultimate goals I have is to leave that impact, bro. If I decide to go MIA and just live off the land because I'm done with this, I still want people to talk about me like I'm still around. Yeah. Like my music is still a thing, you feel me? That's like the whole point. I feel like that that in itself separates a lot of artists. It's like, where do you want to be with this? If you don't know, then you, you know, that's tough. If you know, it's just a matter of persistence and consistency and seeing it through. Because a lot of those artists probably were told it's not going to happen. And then it happens and it's like, yo. And then like they pass, but they're still relevant. It's crazy. But there's not a lot of like artists on that level. Like there's no other Michael Jackson. Yeah, I know, bro. That was the first bad hit. Yeah. The first bad hit was Michael Jackson. The second bad hit was probably X and like everybody else. Yeah, bro. There is no, there's no way we can have another hit because there's nobody else right now. I know, bro. Like maybe the weekend or Kanye. Yeah, like them. Drake, obviously. Drake's like another one that. Yeah. Like, but the three of them, it's like. Even There's Kendrick too. People, yeah, but do, like, when's the last yeah, time? Yeah, t- did, but see, those are got, the goats that's been that's around I mean, for a like, minute. Got those, that's what I'm saying. Is like you talking about newer people stepping on the scene? I was gonna say, like, growing up, I feel like almost every year, like all those artists we're talking about, there was a point where it was just like they had their year where it was like we were growing up, everyone we're going to school with is listening to them. Yeah. It's like everyone's enthusiastic, and then you have the people that ten years later. Those are still their diehard fans that grew up on the shit. No cap. And it's like, I don't know if it's because we're getting older, maybe because we don't have, like, obviously we still have social lives, but it's not like 
we're in school where we're hearing like hundreds of people listening to the know, same bro. shit. I don't know what it is, but there's just no artist. There's a lot of differences because like, school, like obviously, it's easy to share music, but it's not like we don't have community yeah. here. It's not like yeah. I can't hit up any of my friends and yeah. say, "Oh, this, this, and that." So I don't think it's about. I don't know what it is. I, I think, think it's, it's really about. It got to be about the art because age. We're still young, bro. We're not like old people. Yeah. Like you feel me? You but know like, what? It's the fucking consumers and all you short attention span ass motherfuckers, bro. I was about to bring this up. Yeah, yeah. the youth, bro. The youth. These fucking iPad kids, bro. The youth, because the people <laughs> in charge are looking at the youth as these are our number one consumers. These are our money makers. No, it's not, bro. These little kids don't spend nothing except on video games and juice bro and then they think they're influencing them and then they inspire them to get turn 18 and start buying fucking perks every day. no cap <laughs> like, it's kind of nuts like, but like i feel like a lot of the youngins i don't know if there's an artist for let's say age 10 to 17 well that's the thing i don't think they have anyone that they would want to grow up listening to like grow you know, with like, as an artist you feel me eating shit is the people that they be doing that shit to. word it's like like, I'm not really tuned in. I ain't gonna lie. Ye- Yeet's cool. Like longevity. If we're talking about longevity, but if you hear the way these kids it. talk about that, bro, like if you have a conversation with a middle schooler right now, big body, big body, big body, yo, <laughs> that, like they dead ass will talk about like Yeet and yeah. shit. Yeet destroy lonely, like all the motherfuckers. Oh, yeah, destroy lonely. Oh, yo, if we t- yo. Cardi changed it up, bro. Yo, honestly, Cardi did something, bro. Cardi, people saying he fell off. He, bro, I don't know if he did, but he definitely did something, bro. I got a fucking. I think that shit's bots. Cause the Cardi. other day, I was um looking because we're shooting a video tomorrow for Temple. I was looking for reference shots, so I was going through music videos, and mm. one of them was a Cardi video. It was three videos that were all fire as fuck. And I don't know if you know too much about SEO score, but I got a SEO plugin on my computer, so I could see the score for YouTube videos. All these other songs. Way better songs, and they're artists that are, like, it was, one of them was a Weekend video, and the other one was the Leroy video. They had perfect metadata scores, and some of the videos only had, like, like not only, but, like, 5, 10 million. Mm. Cardi's shit had 20 million, and the score was zero. Zero SEO score. Mm. And I was looking at it, and I'm like, okay, so this either A... They just didn't give a fuck at all, and this is just genuine crazy ass engagement. Or B, that shit is botted as fuck, and that's why their SEO score is so fucked up. I think with Cardi is definitely a mix of both. I think it is too. Majority is definitely botched. The in, the industry right now, because bro, you gotta like to be real. You gotta remember, everybody that's in charge is a human just like us. They don't know what's going on. Oh my God, bro. A whole generation can be born that doesn't like country, that doesn't like pop. Now what are they going to do? They're going to start looking for artists that are outside of that and throw mad money on them. Like, they don't know what's going on. So, of course, it's botched, bro. Like, especially we got platforms like Do Over Don't. Y'all probably make the industry shaking their boots. Like, yo, they're coming up kind of crazy. And a lot of artists are kind of dope. And them artists is not coming on this side either. So, like, the industry doesn't know what's going on. That's why I feel like unity within this community, we can wipe out any vulture out there, bro. Like, it's it's kind of, I mean, war is not difficult, bro. Yeah. If we got through a couple world wars, bro, like there you can be can wars war in with the, the industry. industry. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'll be running, like I'll be in the front of that army, like charging, like taking heads off, bro. Yeah, bro. Taking people off the charts who shouldn't be there. It's just getting the troops together, bro. Like you it's see about it, the troops, bro. Using the war analogy, you see it, all the wars. You see how many countries band up together and shit. And you kind of have to, bro. You yeah. can't even. You can't. Literally, there's nothing in life you can do alone. Literally, bro. driving a car, you cannot drive a car alone because somebody made the car for you to oh. drive. It's crazy. So if we're trying to take over an industry that's squeezing our pockets, that's not even pushing the good art, we got to come together. And it sucks because those are also people too, but they don't see us as people. So we got to see ourselves as people before we see them as people. Just crazy, but that's just how it is, bro. Because. I'm not trying to keep making this music and keep pushing the mission if I'm going to just keep getting stabbed in the foot by people that got more opportunities than me. I'm a, That's where the... See, this is my stubborn side talking. Now I'm trying to take heads off, you feel me? Yeah, bro. 
Because, like, I have this is why I call myself stubborn because I'm hard headed. Like, I don't like listening to rules. I don't like being told what to do. I don't like anything that's outside of what where I see myself going. And if I see myself on this path and there's anything in that way, you got to go. Can't do it alone, though. That's why I got my gang with me. I got the pirates with me. I got my boys in Florida with me. But that's going to keep growing over time anyway. And, like, everybody in this building right now is a part of that story of us doing what we got to do. Because everyone deserves that opportunity. Like, the people that know what music is, know how to make it, know what it means, knows how to tell a story through it, photography, video, like, all that stuff, bro, is part of the same wave that can easily crash everything. Straight up. But people don't see it like that sometimes. They see it as, oh, I got to get more views than him. He's Everybody popping. Everybody be blind to it, bro. And Everybody looks at this <clears> shit. <throat> like, it is a competition at the end of the day. But motherfuckers need to get over that shit, bro. Like, the amount yeah, of times... They gotta stop taking it personal, bro. Yo, like, the amount of times, like, you'll be like, yo, like, the way at the beginning of this, I was like, bro, I'm just praising you. Motherfuckers would be like, yo, that's dick riding. And it's, it's like... glazing. Yeah, it's like, yo, nah, how the fuck bro. is dick riding to say your homie shit's dope, bro? Like, and then the Yo, fuck I've up. had friends like that. Like, yeah, they'd be bro. like... They'd be like, I don't want to, like, repost it so people don't think I'm, like, on you like that. It's like, yo, what the like, fuck? Bro, like, since when is support sus? That's what I'm saying, bro. And then the, the worst crazy, part... bro. All y'all motherfuckers, bro. You pointed to You talking me. about people in the successful position. All y'all motherfuckers that are in a successful position and you gatekeep connections, you gatekeep whatever the fuck, like opportunities, whatever. Y'all are little insecure ass bitches that need the fucking, yeah. I can't say certain shit because I cancel culture. Profanity. Like, yeah, cancel culture. But like, bro, nah, them true, motherfuckers bro. that gatekeep, the reason I call them insecure little bitches if you're uh, like seeing success in an industry that everything is borderline impossible and you won't put your homies on because you're so insecure of being your home, like your homie getting fucking bigger than you. That's lame. That shit is the lamest shit, bro. All my the people, we, we have conversations, bro. We're like, any one of us can blow up. Literally, if it's you, like, if it's you, I must be in my same position, supporting, pushing you forward. Like what it is, bro, is greed, insecurity, and just... They can't comprehend anything beyond them. It's crazy. People like that stay far from them. Oh, God, bro. It's easy to tell, though, but if it's not easy to tell, then you might be one of them. And you know so. what the fucked up part is? <coughs> the real motherfuckers always end up being more successful than those people, and those are the same people that come back begging you for opportunities oh, in the God. long run, bro. Scarface was a great guy, but... I man let it get to his head, bro. He yeah. got shot in the chest. He got shot the fuck up. And then actually got shot in the back. That motherfucker got shot everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that motherfucker. Man, that <laughs> ending, <laughs> that ending is crazy. Like, I want, Yo. like, that's what my album is going to sound like. Like, bro. I'm going to speak on this real quick. The, the inspirations for the album for Red Room, because I'm going to just snippet that because it's we'll coming out this year. And then we got the, we got the artist question. I don't even think you realize we're at hour 15. And I got to end peep. this because I got to go to work. <laughs> I peep. I'm like, damn, I wanted this to be 40 minutes max. Bro, I, I did too. I literally before, I'm like, yo, I'm going to cut it out an hour. And then after we started talking for like five minutes, I'm like, this isn't going to be. They're going to be. Uh, <laughs> you might have to do like a part one, part two or something. Bro, we're going to. No, nah, we're going to. This, this one will be good. We're going to have to do a part two when the Red Room shit comes out. That's when we're going to so right, people can bet. see the evolution, bro. Because the evolution is going to be crazy. Every A lot of people know. IG going but, crazy, bro. Because oh. I'm in the building. Stubborn Sal in the <laughs> Yo, building. <bro>. They know. <laughs> two in my face, horn. Bro. I'm one of the top ones. Not yeah. top two. I said in the song, bro. And this ain't no cocky, fraudulent <clears throat> shit. Go listen to the motherfucking music and the shit backs it up. Okay. Get back it up, bro. I only talk when I'm... When I'm uh, I'm authorized to talk. Otherwise, I don't talk. <laughs> I'm authorized right now. Bro. You were, yo, you are a quiet ass dude around people you don't know. Like, I used to always talk to you, but I remember, like, I would just be like, yo, this motherfucker is like a ninja, bro. Nah, like, I don't talk. I use, I use my eyes more than everything. My eyes and ears Straight up. guide me. And you'd be uh, an observant motherfucker. Because yeah. anytime you're sitting there silent, you'll be sitting there on your laptop, and I'm like, this motherfucker is paying attention to every little thing in the room. No right cap. Like, I'm on my laptop, yeah, but bro. I hear everything. You're like bro. a little vulture, a fucking bear, or some shit me? that just got hypersensitive. I'm bro. waiting to hear something I don't like so I can mark that name down. Bro. Bro. <laughs> hear something I do like so I can make sure I show love to them at some point. Yeah, bro. And if I hear myself, then I definitely got to tune in. Because what? Yeah, Talking about me. Yeah. Shoot, I, I was about to make a point. You were saying the red room. You were talking about the red room. Oh right? yeah, that's what you were talking about. I don't even remember what I was going to say about it. You're but about <coughs> inspiration. It oh yeah, so the Scarface, inspiration right? for that album is Scarface. A lot of the weekend sounds. My beautiful dark fantasy. Yo, this shit is like nutty. Every 
Gabe favorite thing mixed. You just heard what he said. Nutty. He said my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, the weekend and Scarface mixed into an album. That literally sounds like fucking bro. If you can make like a crack specifically designed <laughs> just to get me addicted to some shit, that literally is what it would it's be. It's red crack, bro. <laughs> like, red crack. Yo. That's why I'm saying, you know, when you when you try to cook something up to serve the streets, you can't just cook that good stuff in a week, bro. You know, I'm that blue, that blue age, tint, that, bitch. Dry age, that, that shit. blue tint don't come overnight, shorty. You know what I'm saying? That's to all the people. And I'm making the red tint. So imagine how, bro, I've been working on this album for two years. Two. I dropped two, I dropped three projects before this album, knowing I had to finish this album. Bro. I'm dedicated to this man. Man, I'm not talking about your albums anymore. Cause <coughs> now, now that you said that. I hope you realize every time I see you, you're going to have me on your ass asking about that shit. Good, because I got to finish it. Yeah, bro. 13 yes. tracks. Two more need to be recorded. Everything need to be mixed over time. You feel me? Don't have the cover art yet. I'm exposing it like, man, I just got to talk about it because this is what this year is building up to. I'm going to just drop mad. So what you can expect, right, is I'm, I'm going to drop a lot of music videos throughout the year for songs I dropped already, songs that are new. They're just all going to, like, YouTube is going to be my main thing this year. So, because the visuals, bro, you hear it, but you got to see it. Oh, my God, bro. Because the load, the, the reels is, is busting, but just wait for the music videos, bro. I can't wait, bro. No cap. I might have to shoot you one, bro. <laughs> After fucking Do so. I got, a, I got a list of songs, bro. bro. I fucking will. Anybody watching this, too, don't be surprised if you see me shoot up music videos, because I bought an FX3 today. <laughs> Gabe be doing it. Gabe is on that timing. I'm about to be on that shit, bro. You're on a lot of timing. Fucking be on. I was gonna say rainbow timing, but that sounds whoa. Weird. That, sounds, that sounds weird. That sounds weird. I need what another that Friday. Even Skittles, mean? Skittles timing. We no, on Skittles timing. that's just even, as bad. What is Jambalaya that? Jambalaya timing. Shout out Ken Frank. Jambalaya timing. That's hard to trust though. Off the tongue. Purple timing, bro. Damn. We, we on variety timing. We'll say that. Sure. Variety timing. Variety. Yeah. We making, <laughs> we making smoothies of creative shit. Smoothies. In this whoa. Building, <laughs> no, I'm playing. <laughs> Let's get these last couple fucking advice questions out the way so oh, we don't... Not the advice. Yo, and y'all already know, even though I already said it, there's going to be a part two to this episode. So y'all motherfuckers, yeah. don't get mad at me for all the returning guests, bro. But Indeed, anybody that's yo. of substance, I'm getting them I deserve back, it. You I ain't going to lie. I you should have been on it, here like three times already. I'm honestly surprised at this. If you're watching time. this, you're chosen. Like You feel me? Bro. If you're watching this right now, just type chosen because you're chosen. If you don't type it, you're not chosen, bro. Yo, honestly, instead of me even asking like fucking like mad different advice questions, I'm going to just ask the one because I have mad other shit that I didn't even touch in this that I want to save for the second one. All right. Y'all just got, I know I'm trying to make these They got the like, freestyle. Yeah. Like we just covered so <laughs> many good topics and people just, you guys got raw, stubborn Sal. I'm sorry that it wasn't an extra just info. Raw. Well, it is informative too. If you actually pay the fuck attention, it's informative. There's some gems in here. There's some gems. Yeah. It's not like though normally because I'm sitting there, I'm like, Oh, what do you advise artists to do this? Do you advise them to do that? Blah, blah, yeah. blah. But it's getting tiresome a little bit, bro. The I'm next sorry. one can be really like me preaching. Yeah, like that one. And I'm especially a pastor. with the album, bro. Like I was album. born a pastor. I came out with my mom as a pastor speaking sermons. Yo, I was going to say, bro. I baptized the doctor when he took me out. Tempo, if you're watching this, every time I have a fucking podcast, I go, I have a podcast. Don't call me. Temple is a type. He's a type. <laughs> Temple, bro. Temple. You're a type. Something, bro. But yeah, ben next. Temple. I already know, bro. I love doing the progression episodes because right now this is like technically like the third like little progression mark we got on the channel. But I already know from just seeing your workflow, like this the is next like, time I'm here, bro. I might. It's gonna be. You might fucking be a fucking superstar, fucking number one Billboard charting sure, artist. Like, I hope I, so. I, I genuinely would not be surprised, bro. I hope so. And also, too, I gotta say as like a little disclaimer, even though I think I've said it to you off camera already, bro. I'm so happy seeing you in this bag because it's like I feel like you've been trying to get in it the whole time I've known you basically. Yeah, it's like yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It's always been there, but just actually seeing it like fully come to life, seeing the consistency X, Y, and Z is. I'm you, not bro. gonna lie, bro. You, bro. Every time I hear something like that or similar to that, I'm like, really? It's I think I'm slacking sometimes. It's apparent, bro. I'm gonna tell you the same like, thing. Like K Sully be saying, bro, your content go crazy, like this and that. Bro. I'm like, yeah, that means a lot, though. I appreciate that. You know what I'm gonna say, though? Thank you first. I'm, no problem. But I'm gonna say the same thing, tempo, bro. I said the tempo. 
all this like IG comparison shit, bro. It's so easy to like get caught up in it. But if you okay. want to compare <clears throat> to other people in the good way, and no disrespect, but also at the same time, all disrespect to the artists around here. Go around <laughs> all the artists you know whose page, and then look at your own page, and then give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> do that today, bro. Like dead ass. I'm telling you, literally pick like ten <laughs> artists from around here. Go through them, like. I'm going to do that today. That'd be crazy I'm if I left you. a comment on each artist that I'm like, Yo. I patted myself on the back after looking at your page. Bro, like, like straight up. I'm telling you, because when you really go sit there and look, you're going to be like, okay, I see, I see what everyone's yeah, that's, about. Yeah, I mean, that's what keeps me going, though. Like, hearing that, or even, yeah. like, you, you're, what you said about your friends and how they think about my music, it's like, okay, yeah. I should just keep going. No need oh. to stop. Just keep Compliments, going. like, hearing that shit as a creative in general. Like, when you hear just that genuine love, that's literally It's not fuel. even an ego boost. It's yeah. a soul boost. That's what I mean, bro. It's that's a spirit boost. It's like you take gas and pour that shit right in, bro. It's like, whoop. It's going to get hotter and hotter. It's one of the best feelings. I'm getting hot. Bro. <sighs> I'm getting hot. If you guys have heard that song before. They haven't. That it, they don't know. <sighs> I, don't I don't know, know yet, bro. I can't wait for people to really know what's going <laughs> like, on. That's what I, I'm just sitting here the whole time, and it's like, bro, all this shit I'm talking about, mad motherfuckers haven't even seen. It's because like, you know what bro. it is, bro. The stars ain't aligned yet. I don't even want to say it like that, but honestly, there are so many people that when they actually get to tune in to me, the Pirates, Casper, even more Temple, because I know he's he's been con- consistent too. A lot of us, when y'all really get to see what we're doing, you're going to be like, I've been asleep this whole time. But no, nah, not really. Yeah. We're all just cooking up right now. We all needed our fuck ups, bro. Me and Tempo were talking about that on the phone earlier today where it's like everybody that we see get their shit together. It just seems like it was an overnight thing. But I'm in like, reality, it's like years of It took ups. a minute. Like years and years of fuck ups. Bro. I love it, though. Okay. Me, I'm, I'm like in love with the process. Straight up. That's why I never like test because that's the finished the, the destination uh, I'd rather study And not take the test Straight up Take bro. the test in real life See, this, this man be talking like Gandhi bro Y'all that's motherfuckers got Short attention cousin. fans That's my bro cousin bro That's why I shaved the head what? No, yeah. I'm not doing that yeah. <laughs> bro. That ass but, though, bro The same shit I said to Meech bro You gotta like be like a pastor Or some shit bro. Nah Meech is valid talking, bro, bro. I, I like, f- like me and him talk But we haven't talked a lot Because we know Like once we talk yo, We actually have to talk I was gonna say bro When you guys get in a room together That is gonna be like A lifelong relationship Cause honestly As people I've spent mad time around me Y'all are actually very similar Yeah y'all, We, we crossed past similar. a few times I'm like yeah We kinda cut from the same Maybe a different shade of the of the cloth, but it's it's the same. Shout out Meech, bro. Meech is great. I love Meech, bro. Meech is a very wholesome person. Very like whole, like he a, he a goat, bro. Meech is like my like music. And his flows is tough. <laughs> yeah, bro. That motherfucker. Jeez. Different breed, bro. That dude, a different breed. Let's get this advice question out the way, though, yeah, and then we're gonna word, wrap word, this shit up for word. y'all short attention span motherfuckers. I wish I could drop two hour episodes. Wrap it up like the back. But you already know how this shit goes. Biggest piece of advice, any artist starting out, but instead of just asking them what they should do, what should they also not do? And by artists starting out, I'm talking about they ain't got a single song recorded. They don't have equipment. They don't got no creative friends. How would you, <laughs> like, they don't got nothing. Like, th- the way you were talking about, Yo. like, Africa, how they got, like, the little hierarchy and people picture the, like, absolutely nothing. So nothingness. this is the bottom of the bottom. This, this is those slums that you were talking All about right. for an artist. So how if you're trying to get a mansion in Africa, what should you do, basically? All right, so if you're just if you're just starting out as a musician, is there a limit to the advice? Do I gotta like give three points? Nah, just give as much as you want, bro. All right, as much as you want. Anything Reflecting on my come up, if you're trying to make music and be good at it, rule number one: you need to listen to music. You can't just listen to what you like. You gotta listen to what's good, and you gotta listen to what's not good. Gotta listen to music, different genres. Uh, expose yourself to art. As rule. Number one. Number two, what resonates with you? Study your soul. Study what resonates with you. Study what you like and understand what you don't like and why you don't like it. I don't like country sometimes because it's not enough for me. You feel me? And that's me to know what I mean by that. It's just not enough for me. I like jazz because that's plenty for me. You feel me? So understand why you don't like what you like, why you like what you like. Then create. That's it. If you don't create, you're not doing nothing. Don't look at each creation as something to critique. Look at it as a step in a long staircase. You feel me? 
And that staircase might end, it might not, but you're not focused on with the next step. You're focused on the current. If you want to record a song, then do that. On a logistical level, band lab is a thing. If you got to start off on an iPhone, the Apple headphones, do that. If you're looking for quality, you might just have to just make $200. Buy yourself an interface or a USB mic. $200, $250, that might be all you need, literally. You can either use your friend's laptop if he's cool with music too, or get your own somehow, legally, and just start making songs. You feel me? Make mad songs, different type of songs. Write music a lot too. If you're not writing, you're not writing and that's not good. So you got to write. So to recap from my artists just starting out who want to be like Stubborn Sal, you got to listen to music and then you got to know what you don't like, know what you like, got to create and you need to find a process that's that's the sum of what the last point is get a process of creating microphone band lab whatever the case may be don't even matter what it is it can literally like one of my homies started making music from playing the beat on his tv and recording his voice on his phone that dedication right there i respected it when i saw it i was like no just come to the studio and then we still make music to this day shout out mj maslin humble beginnings bro yeah (laughs) shout out mj Cause he, yeah, like honestly, yeah, it's it's those four simple steps: expose yourself to music, know what you know your taste, create your taste, and refine it with the process. And then you stick to that, bro. You're gonna find yourself in my shoes. Y'all motherfuckers, if you ain't listen, rewind that shit. Take notes. Listen the fuck back. Yeah, take notes like she is in the corner. Feel me? <laughs> How to be like Bro. stubborn. I'm not gonna lie, when you said this shit about getting a laptop legally, I had to try so hard not to die <laughs> laughing. <laughs> it's so easy to steal, bro. She knows. I I be, a lot of people. I used to be a thief. Bro. We not getting into that. Yeah. Cause I already dropped how to be stubborn. I don't need to be it no more. Yeah, oh, I'm red so fantasies busy. and you got that out of the Yeah, no cap. It's out my system. <laughs> When the album comes out, then I'll really get it out my Motherfuckers system. Motherfuckers can get all the layers, yeah. All the all dualities the layers. and layers of my character, which I can't reveal in person because I need to put in music first. Bro. That's real life. Brother, this has been an amazing episode. Shout out all the guests recently, bro, because I've bro, just bro. had, like... A lot like, of people been fired, bro. Yeah, bro, I've been <coughs> having, like, great-ass episodes recently. But thank you for fucking coming on the show. You got anything else you want to add on, bro? Um, Listen to my music. Follow me if you want to, but just listen to my music. I think my music speaks more than I do. I talk a lot, but I don't make sense, but my music makes sense. So listen to my music and share it if you like it. If you don't like it, comment that you don't like it. I need some fluctuation in my comment section. If you don't like it, y'all motherfuckers might need a brain transplant, bro, straight up. Your chromosomes are in 2020 if you don't like it. (laughs) All of them. (laughs) Yo, bro. Bro. Yeah, that's it. Oh, oh, real quick. Stubbornstylemusic.com Check that out I got merch You can look at all my songs on there You can buy some clothes I can hand deliver it to you That's what we doing now The weather's nice So really just tap in bro Listen to Gabe Y'all motherfuckers bro I know you guys be I be gassing up the homies a little too much sometimes But this one Please listen Please just Just one song I don't give a fuck what song it is. Hit as shuffle. long as it was after In the Ivory, because that's when you got like the like. I ain't gonna lie. Anything before that, I don't listen to I was gonna that. say, before <laughs> that, before that, it's like the evolution. It's still good. I don't listen to that. I was in like, the microwave still. Yeah, now I'm in the oven. Yeah, the oven's bro. Better. Any of the oven music, listen to that shit. I promise you, you will not be disappointed and you will gain a new favorite artist. Anybody watching this, seriously. Like, and once again, thank you, bro, for fucking coming on the show as Appreciate your boy, it. bro. And just as another creator, I'm beyond proud of the growth I've seen the past couple of years, bro. Because, like, yeah, like I said, I, I've been waiting to see you in this bag right now. You were always one of those bad. artists where I was like, this dude is so fire. He just got to give a little more. And it's never mm-hmm. that you weren't giving a little more. You were just the hypercritical, always mm-hmm. have shit. And then it I just had to never put the red dot on it. I had no beam, bro. I was sniping with no beam, but now I got a beam. Motherfucker got the precision down now. I got it. So I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you showing the love and just, you know, encouraging me to do what I keep doing, bro. Keep doing what you're doing, too. Appreciate it, bro. Keep doing what you're doing. And make the right choices and don't be afraid to ask for help. Oh, God, bro. Anybody watching this, bro? 
Y'all, y'all got mad messages throughout this <coughs> podcast. I'm not even going to say anything reminding y'all. If you didn't get it, like he said, your chromosomes. I'm going to make sure my son listens to this when he's one. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, this, this was a good ass episode, bro. Thank you, Appreciate seriously. That. Yes, sir. Anybody watching this, too, thank y'all. And I say this every single episode, and I'm tired of this corny ass informational YouTube shit. If you didn't smash the like button, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you. If you ain't smash the subscribe button, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you either. Then your chromosomes are stuck in 2020. But. This been episode 103. Go to stubbornsoundmusic.com. Go stream that shit and tune in to next week's episode. Toodaloo, motherfuckers. Baby, don't you be afraid to say you love me. Baby, why you scared to tell me that you love me?